Dr. Priyanka Bandera. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Pri. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. She's joining us from Sydney, Australia. And so it is uh, already, it's Friday, and it's winter time there. I have a hard time wrapping my head around that because it's almost 100 degrees here in Colorado today. But um, welcome so much. Thank you for uh, your patience as you're waiting to come on stage. But I would like to introduce her as a former academic, clinical, and basic researcher at leading Australian hospitals and universities, now operating as an independent health researcher. Her interest in medicine has switched from finding cures to disease prevention after experiencing firsthand how chronic diseases damage families. So we'd like to ask you, uh, um, Dr. Priyanka, if you can share with us some scientific evidence that suggests exposure to microwave radiation uh, can cause all these problems that we're concerned about, from mental health issues to life-threatening physical diseases such as cancer. And you have the floor. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Um, it's it's a, 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 gr a great opportunity to... Um, relay um, the, the findings of my research on this topic over the last um, seven years. And I'll start sharing my slides. Okay, so um, uh, transmitters of um, a microwave uh, or radio frequency radiation used to be really rare and distant objects like broadcast uh, broadcasting towers or radar towers um, until recent decades. And uh, from about 1980s mostly, these um, microwave emitters started coming into our homes in the forms of um, microwave ovens, so you know, cordless phones, and then uh, the mobile phone became a, a life companion and particularly over the last 10 years, we have a situation where microwave emitters are intimately, um, you know, in, in our, con you know, with, uh, with contact and or even on the bodies of young children, as you can see. Um, this is unfortunately in a, in a, in a background of uh, scientific evidence of harm, which has been largely ignored um, for purely for economic um, interests. I urge you all to have a look at this site if you haven't already. The International EMF Scientist Appeal to the World Health Organization and the UN, um, where 247 experts from 42 countries um, have um, petitioned for immediate measures for public health protection from artificial man-made electromagnetic fields. And I happen to be one of these uh, 247 uh, experts on this matter. Now, um, the current exposure regulation is um, not going to protect you from anything other than short-term heating effects. You don't have to just, you know, try, uh, you know believe what I say. Uh, this is a letter from the, the US EPA confirming what I just said. They cannot protect you from long-term effects or chronic effects um, or any effects other than heating, tissue heating. Uh, it's, um, it's not a surprise at all that these uh, man-made electromagnetic fields interfere with, uh, with, with life. We are all complex electrochemical beings. Bioelectricity drives every form of life on Earth. And this bioelectricity has been utilized by both Eastern and Western medicine for, for centuries. And, you know, for example, when, um, when you do an ECG, you're looking at the electrical activity of the, the heart muscle. And an EEG looks at the electrical activity of the brain. Now, uh, it's important to highlight that um, this bioelectricity at cellular level, uh, I'm, I'm talking to uh, not cellular phones, but like, you know, the, 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 the cells that we are made up of. Um, at a cellular level, 
bioelectricity is generated by um, uh, specialized, highly sophisticated proteins called ion channels or transporters, which regulate the, the, the electrical activity of the cell by moving in highly coordinated manner um, charged, um, um, and like in you know, a charged species, um, ions. And a lot of pharmaceutical drugs target these ion channels and transporters, and some of them have become um, block blast, blockbuster drugs generating over a billion dollars in revenue per year. And that, that's an indication um, for the importance of bioelectricity in, in human health. Now, so um, what evidence do we have when we say that uh, mobile phone radiation or wireless radiation from um, Wi-Fi, baby monitors, um, you know, uh, the whole lot? What evidence do we have that it can interfere with our uh, biological functions? Now, here's one fine example from the National Institutes of Health USA. Um, High, high quality study um, done on 47 healthy participants. Now, when the, the, the brain was exposed to standard mobile phone type radiation, there was a very clear uh, a change in the brain glucose metabolism. In, in just 50 minutes, you can see these are um, PET scans and with the exposure here, you can see the, the, the darker, um, the sort of yellow orange um, uh, shows that increased uh, glucose metabolism. Now, that shows that the, the, the brain cells are getting activated. But we don't know what this means in the long, uh, long term, but there's a lot of studies, uh, literally thousands of peer-reviewed studies that... Um, most of which indicate um, uh, potential adverse health if, uh, outcomes. Now, when we look at the human, uh, the, the not just human, an animal, typical animal cell, or um, you know, similar structure in plants as well, these are extremely sophisticated, complex structures with lots of different parts. You know, these are the mitochondria that are the powerhouses in your cells and the, the nucleus containing our genetic material in DNA, um, there is evidence that all these components are affected by electromagnetic radiation from wireless devices. Now, I looked, uh, you know, with the, with the help of my colleagues at OSA, uh, the, uh, Oceania Radio Frequency Scientific Advisory Association, a, a, a non-profit um, focused on investigating the, the scientific evidence of um, man-made radio, radio um, frequency radiation. We investigated and presented in uh, 2017 the evidence from 242 studies uh, from 29 countries. <coughs> Pardon me that investigated if um, wireless radiation could, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, if wireless radiation could cause oxidative stress. And 89% found positive data, some even in humans, showing clear damage to even our DNA. And this is the type of evidence that we cannot ignore, although they are largely being ignored. Now, so when we put all the, um, the evidence, pieces of evidence together, what we see is that wireless radiation causes um, multi-system dysfunction by causing um, uh, oxidative stress and um, reduce if we, uh, and also um, interfering with um, various chemical production uh, in our body, like uh, this melatonin, a vital hormone, and interfering with immune functions, um, hormonal functions, etc. Et 
causing multi-system dysfunction. And this leads to accelerated aging and chronic diseases like cancer. The evidence is very strong. Now, here's one example of um, DNA damage caused by wireless radiation. I will not go into details, but um, this is simply, if we have a cell with intact DNA, you see something like this. So um, this is without a DNA damaging agent exposure. And here we have the, the positive control with the known exposure, um, uh, with an exposure uh, that's known to cause DNA damage, in this case, a very high dose of ionizing radiation. And what happens is when the DNA is physically damaged or fragmented, those fragmented, um, you know, uh, bits and pieces, you know, pieces of DNA forms what's like a, a, a tail of a comet, hence uh, this assay being called the comet assay. And, and look what happens when the scientist um, treated these cells with mobile phone radiation. They, they found, they actually did, I mean, this was done as a European um, a Union uh, funded study, a large study called Reflex um, that was in uh, many different centers and this particular a set of experiments um, was conducted at the Medical University of Vienna. And what they found, they were surprised to find this uh, direct evidence of DNA damage. Um, but this has been confirmed in um, many studies subsequently. So wireless radiation can, can damage our DNA. Now, here's the latest snapshot of the world cancer map. The brighter, the, the, the darker the blue, the higher the cancer rate. So this is a new cancer diagnosis rate or the incidence rate. Um, as you can see at a glance, one does not need to be an expert at all. One can see that the, uh, the developed Western societies are the cancer hotspots in the world. And unfortunately, uh, where you know my country, Australia, has the, the highest into, uh, cancer incidence rate out of 185 countries in the world. Not a good statistic. Now, um, there's, there are a large number of studies that show that increased exposure to wireless radiation or radio frequency radiation is a, is a risk factor in cancer. Now, I want to share just one study from Brazil where they looked at um, over 7,000 cancer deaths and mapped those deaths to uh, the city's mobile phone towers. And what they found was um, very, very clear evidence of um, uh, increasing um, cancer death rate closer to mobile phone towers, as you can see this elevated risk um, took um, a, a long distance to come to the expected rate. Um, but this type of study, these are epidemiological studies, they do not provide, uh, you know, although they are very useful, that wouldn't tell us, you know, that can't really say that the radiation caused those, um, those cancers. But, you know, if you are looking for a bit of a, like a smoke gun, um, this, you know, when, you know, this is um, from a study where um, doctors in, in America reported uh, unusual multiple bright primary um, breast cancers in young women who carried the cell phones tucked in their bras and... Um, these women didn't have any other risk factor. And, um, uh, you know, these are, you know, we have to look at this, um, uh, this type of, you know, evidence along with um, the other lines of evidence. And uh, just to quickly go through, now you can access these slides and the references, so do not try to, you know, grasp. I have to just flick through them quickly. Uh, just some um, uh, examples of, of studies. Now, 
21 studies out of 27 that investigated if radiofrequency radiation can cause sperm damage, bone damage. So it's time to take wireless devices away from um, reproductive organs, not just, you know, um, you know, boys, it applies to girls as well. Their eggs are precious, we need to protect them. And now, apart from the physical damage, like DNA damage, there's um, this very strong evidence of neurological uh, damage leading to neurobehavioral diseases, disorders, and um, poor cognitive um, outcomes. The nervous system, the nerve cells, are most sensitive to this type of uh, to wireless radiation. And, and um, there's substantial evidence showing that people who um, are exposed to uh, this type of radiation have uh, you know, a higher risk of developing a neurobehavioral uh, uh, symptoms. And these um, studies come from uh, different countries where um, neurobehavioral symptoms and increased prevalence of these symptoms have been found near fixed microwave transmitters, mobile base stations, military radar, or broadcast towers. And in the last one in Spain, this was actually, you know, that showed it was done on a boy's age 10, and um, there were adverse cognitive effects and um, it was sort of anxiety type disorders um, in, in, in children with high levels of residential radio frequency radiation. Now, with that, given what I've presented, I let you ask the question uh, or you know, answer my question, Wi-Fi versus wired, which is wise? Thank you. Wonderful presentation. Great way to end it. Um, really does make us think, doesn't it? Those uh, photos are so strong. Thank you very much, Dr. Bandera. Wonderful. So with that, um, great way to wrap this up, this session. I, I know we, we have enough expertise on hand to keep going for weeks, and, and I know we're running longer than we ideally were wanting to, but it's kind of hard to, to gauge just how, how this is going to go. And you've all been patient with a few of our technical glitches behind the scenes here. So I think we did very well.